Hi there smart monkeys and welcome to my channel and if you've been here before welcome back this is my little platform where I turn struggling math students into math masters I post videos Tuesdays and Thursdays so be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification button if you want to know when I post any new videos in this video I'm going to be looking at maps and scales again one of the highly requested topics um, that I've received from you guys in the comment section so Here's the video. Um, I'm going to be going over really just how to answer any type of map and scaling question that so that you actually can get full marks for this section because it's one of those sections where if you get it, you really can answer any of the questions. But if you really don't, every map question can actually be really draining for you. So hopefully. I can get you all to understand this a lot better by the end of this video. So, let's do this. So this is the first lesson on maps and scales and I'm going to be focusing on bar scales and number scales with regards to maps in this lesson. Okay. So let's start right at the beginning, making sure that we understand the, um, the concepts um, of this actual lesson, right? The first thing, it's important that you note that maps, maps are shrunken graphical representation of real life, okay? So there are essentially <clears throat> three things that go with uh, maps. You first have the actual drawing, which is your map. Then you have the real life, um, you know, place that the map is representing. And then you have the scale, which tells you the relationship between the real life and the actual thing drawn on the map. Obviously, you can logically think if I was to, if I were to map out the a school ground, I can't actually fit it on a page that is the size of the school ground. So it needs to be shrunk down to fit on a page. And by how many times it actually gets shrunk down to fit on the page will then refer to your scale. Okay, so maps are shrunken gra graphical representation of real life. Every map is drawn to a specific scale and is drawn proportionally to reality. So what that means is that in reality, if the field is bigger than the seating area, then on the map the field would be bigger in the seat than the seating area in the same proportion. Okay, then for example, a map of Cape Town is drawn with a number scale of 1 is to 50. Now, in all of the number scales, the 1 represents the map and the 50 represents the real life. So it says a map of, the, of Cape Town is drawn to a scale of 1 is to 50. So what does this mean? This means for every one unit drawn on the map, it's 50 units in reality. Okay, so if it's one centimeter on the map, then that means it will be 50 centimeters in reality. Okay, <clears throat> so that's the gist of that. Then you have to understand that there are two scales that you are expected to know. The first scale we've looked at is the number scale, where I explained to you where the one represents the map and the 50 represents the real life scenario. And then we have a bar scale. A bar scale essentially tells you that if I measure the width of this, it will equal to whatever measurement is under that width. So in this case, if I take my ruler and I measure from there to there, it is 8 centimeters. So essentially on this map, 8 centimeters is then equal to 2 kilometers. Okay. Um, I will just add that... It is always safest that most maps use a bar scale because with a bar scale, if you shrink a map, a, a, a map so let's say you're making photocopies of it and it doesn't fit on a A4 page, then you're shrinking it down. If you shrink that map down, then the number scale obviously will no longer be valid because you are adjusting the size of this specific um map but if it's a num if it's a bar scale then that bar scale also shrinks proportionally so having a bar scale really allows you to you know work with various sizes and increase it and decrease it 
uh, the actual map and you will still it would still give you an accurate representation of that in real life okay so that's just two types of scales now i'm gonna go into covering and looking at there's only with maps great wealth there's only with scales specifically there's only three categories of questions right that they can ask you and what's important for you to do is to be just to be able to identify what the question that they're asking in which of these three categories does it fall and then you will do that specific method okay so i'm going to work through now the three different categories and explain how you would do the calculations now okay so category one we're going to take this map excuse me of cape town and the first type of question they can ask you is to find the real life measurement okay so you have a map sorry you have a map and you have to find out what is the distance in real life so let's read this inf the information given now again grade 12 so i'm now just sort of listing it so that it's easy for you to see and do the calculation but in a test situation you're going to have to look at okay what is the question what is the scale and what is the actual measurement on the map okay so that um you can actually get this information i've already sort of summarized it because they can really give it to you in all sorts of scenarios but ideally this first type of question is looking at a map and you have to determine what is the distance in real life so the question says calculate the actual distance between durbanville and brackenfell in kilometers um, it says that the scale of this map is one is to six hundred thousand and the map measurement of the street or essentially of the distance between durbanville and brackenfell is two centimeters so you would take this uh, let's say this isn't given to you you'd actually have to take your ruler and actually calculate it so and actually uh, you know determine the distance on the map so on the map the distance is two centimeters but ideally what um, the question is asking is what is the real life distance between these two now the method is fairly simple if you have all the information okay and they must give you all the information you just have to make sure that you go find it okay so the way you will start this is you will always start with the scale okay now remember the scale the left hand side represents the map and the right hand side represents the real life so what they are giving you now is they giving you the maps calculation so this two that you've measured from the map you are going to put on the left side then you're going to use the lvn method which I will just in, um, let you know is in my conversions um, video where I explain how this works. But essentially, you're going anti-clockwise, dividing first and then multiply. So I'm going to take the 600,000, divide it by 1, multiply it by 2, and that will then give me 1,200,000 centimeters. So in real life, that is the distance between uh, Durbanville and Brackenfell. However, the question wants to know what is this in kilometers so again you can refer back to my conversions video if you don't know how to do this but i'm going to take that answer and i'm going to divide it by 100,000 because there's 100,000 centimeters in a kilometer and i end up with 12 kilometers so the actual real life distance between durbanville and brackenfell is then 12 kilometers okay so one what's important here is identifying the question the question gives you the scale, gives you the map, and you have to now calculate the real life calculation. If you identify that that's the type of question, then you will move to the actual method where you start by, uh, start with the, um, the scale, and then you will put whatever the distance is between what they're asking you in the question, you will place it under the left hand value. Then you will do the LVN method, and then convert the answer to whatever um, unit the question is asking. Okay, so that is type one. Now let's look at type two. The second question says, finding the map measurement. So here, the actual distance between Brackenfell and Stellenbosch is 22 kilometers, right? So this is the information in real life. Calculate the distance on the map in millimeters. And the scale that they give you here is 1 is to 440,000. So, the way you would start this question now, okay, is you will start again 
with a scale. But now you'll note that the actual distance is 22 kilometers. So the actual value is always on the right side of the scale. So I'm going to place the 22 under the right side of the scale. Then I'm going to do the LVN method, which is anti-clockwise, divide first, then times. So I'm going to say the 22 divided by the 440,000 multiplied by the 1, and that gives me 0 0.00005 kilometers. Okay, what is the question asking? The question is asking for this in millimeters. So how do I convert this to millimeters? I'm going to take that, multiply it by 1 million, and I will get 50 millimeters. So that means that the actual distance on the map is then 50 millimeters. Okay, so that's how you will do it. So again, we will start by identifying the question. So the question is saying, okay, calculate the actual, uh, calculate the maps uh, distance, right? So if we want to calculate the maps measurement, then again, we will start with a scale and we'll place the real life value under the right value on the scale. And then we will work anti-clockwise, dividing first 10 times and then converting it to the unit that is actually asked in the question. Okay, that is type two. Now type three, the third type of question where they say, determine the scale of the map. Okay, so here you'll see in the first scenario, you were given the real life and you are you given the map measurement and you had to calculate the real life. In the second one, you're given the real life and you have to calculate the map measurement. Now, they're giving you the real life and they're giving you the map. And you now have to calculate what is the scale that they use for the specific map. Okay, so this is how we're going to do it. It says here, the actual distance between Guguletu and Kaya Licha is 5 kilometers. Right? So that's in actuality. Then, the map measurement is 4 centimeters. Right? What is the scale of the map? So, this is how you're going to start. And remember I said the left-hand side's measurement is going to be the map always, and the right-hand is the actual, is the real life. So, I'm going to literally write that down as is. So, the real life, the map on the left is 4 centimeters, and then 15 kilometers on the right. Right? So, now that we have sort of the... The information that's given to us we have to now take this and we have to put it in number form in other words where the left hand's value is a one is two and then you have the actual scale on the right so how do we do this we first step when you get this when you get to this point is you're going to convert the right hand side to the same units that is in the left hand side right so i'm going to convert the 15 kilometers to be in centimeters and the way I do that is I'll take the 15, multiply by 100,000, and that will give me then the 1,500,000. Okay? So that is, now both of them are in centimeters. Once you have both of the units that are the same, then you divide both values by the number that's on the left. So you'll divide both sides by 4 so that the left value can be 1, and then whatever the answer is on the right will tell you what the scale is. And in this case, it's 375,000. So what does this mean? This means that the map has been shrunk down 375,000 units down proportionally to actually give you the map. Okay. And that is essentially the third type of question. But now... What if, in a test, they give you a bar scale? And if you have noticed that in all of these calculations, we use the number scale. We assume they'll give us the number scale. So what I always teach my students is I teach them all the calculations that you need to do with the number scale. So like I've shown you now, all of this that I've shown you, these three examples, had to do with the number scale. So if they give you the bar scale, I tell my students to convert the bar scale to a number scale and then use the number scale for all of the calculations being asked. So I'm going to show you quickly how to do that. So converting a bar scale to a number scale. So if I have a look at this now, let's say this is the 
bar scale that's given. Okay, so the bar scale says that 10 centimeters on the map will equal to 2 kilometers in real life. Okay, so the measurement of the ruler is actually the map's measurement, and the measurement on the um, actual scale is in real life. So you are again going to do it exactly like we did it in the previous example, actually. Excuse me, you are going to say 10 centimeters, which is the map measurement, is to the real life. Then you're going to put them in the same unit, right? So you're going to put the kilometers. And this is sort of what I show you how I teach it in my conversions lesson, where we're going from kilometers to centimeters. So we're going to multiply and we're going to multiply by two five zeros. Okay, so that will be the two times a thousand times a hundred. Okay, so you can either do it this way or the way that I did it in the previous example. I've in the previous example, I've literally just used all of the zeros and then just left out the one there and done one calculation. So here I would have said then two times one hundred thousand because it's one and all the noughts together. Okay. So it doesn't matter which method you use, as long as you're making sure that you're using the right total for whatever they're asking you to convert between. So 10 centimeters, now both of these are then in centimeters. So I've got 10 centimeters is equal to 200,000 centimeters. Now, based on the previous example, you should know the next step is we're just going to divide by the number on the left. So we're going to divide by 10. And so the number scale for the number scale, um, the number scale that's valid for this bar scale is 1 is to 20,000. So now you can then use the 1 is to 20,000 when you're doing all the other calculations. So essentially I've given you all the tools that you need to be able to use to answer any of the questions that they ask you regarding maps and scales. All right, and I hope that you understand this now much better. So there's that video. Um, I hope you found it helpful. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, add it in the comment section below. And if you have any recommendations for any future videos, you can also add that in the comment section below. And I will then see you in the next video. Thanks, guys. Bye.